Jeffrey slowly opens his crusty eyes. He can already feel the throbbing pain in his head from all the junk food he ate last night. He checks his phone. It's... Jeffrey slowly opens his crusty eyes. Shut the hell up, Jeffrey. Jeffrey slowly opens his crusty eyes. He can already feel the throbbing pain in his head from all the junk food he ate last night. He checks his phone. It's three in the afternoon. He's got assignments to hand in tomorrow. But what do you think Jeffrey does? He opens up TikTok and starts Yo, who the hell is Jeffrey? This man be talking about Jeffrey every video. Hey, yo. Yo, shout out to my man Jeffrey. This man be going through it in every video. Whoever this man is, I'm praying for you, dog. Because every video, it seems like you're going through it, Jeffrey. Rolling. I'll just look at a couple of videos and then I'll go brush my teeth, thinks Jeffrey. Two hours later and he's still scrolling. And by the time that he Damn, gets Jeffrey. up, there's only a couple hours left of daylight. Adonis. Adonis is awake before- This man Adonis is the polar opposite of Jeffrey. His life is just immaculate in every way, shape, or form. Damn. Life really ain't fair. Sorry, Jeffrey. Before the birds have even begun to sing, he understands that for men, life is a race. And if you want to win this race, you have to start before everyone else. Adonis doesn't check his phone. He doesn't even know what TikTok huh? is. Whilst Jeffrey is Bruh. staggering home from his night out, Adonis is on his morning run. By the time Jeffrey wakes up, Adonis has already been to the gym and finished his work for the day. This is how all young men should live. Myself and a lot of other guys my age, so I'm 25 years old, are so grateful that we've never actually used TikTok properly. But this video is for those younger men who may have a TikTok addiction. And, you know, this seems like a little wishy-washy video just talking, oh, you know, TikTok's a bad app. But as we get further and further into our understanding of what TikTok actually is and how it truly ruins your life, you start to realize that this is a lot more serious than we think it is. Because on the... TikTok is probably the most addictive app they have ever created in the history of apps. Probably the most addictive thing ever. It's kind of insane how addicting TikTok is. It truly is mind blowing, bro. It literally forms its entire for you page like the. It pretty much makes an algorithm specifically for you, forming that everything you see on your TikTok page is specifically meant for what it believes that you would like and you would interact with the most. The more that you watch the video, the more that you comment, the more that you like, the more that specific type of post you're going to see on your TikTok page, more and more and more. TikTok is absolutely insane. It'll literally look at other apps that you use on your phone and like see what you're doing on those and then put stuff on your For You page that has stuff to do with the stuff that you're looking at on the other app. Bro, TikTok... It's honestly insane. Literally, like, if you're typing a video on YouTube, it'll give you something very similar, if not the same exact video, like a clip of that video you just watched on your For You page, literally, like, a couple hours later. It's truly insane. I wouldn't be surprised if they had some crazy secret, like, mystical technology to, to where, like, once you tap the screen, it, like, like, uh, activates your blood and it can, like, go to your brain and see what you're actually thinking so that it can just put your thoughts literally on the screen so you get more, even more engaged on TikTok to get you just wasting absurd amounts of time on that app, bro. I would not be surprised. That app's algorithm, that app's AI intelligence is so insanely advanced, it's honestly mind-blowing to me. The surface tiktok seems like a harmless app it's just you know social media it's just a bit of fun you can see videos of people like dancing or doing some goofy pranks yeah it's it's okay isn't it but the issue is that tiktok has been meticulously designed to addict you to siphon yeah. away the most important thing that they can take away from you which is your attention you open the app harmlessly you know just a quick two minutes of fun you start scrolling the videos are only 15 seconds long so you surely can't spend too much time on here right and then hours pass by and did you know that the average tiktok user is on tiktok five times more than the average youtube user uses youtube five times bro more. what it's been around for more than a decade and it's amassed about two billion users tiktok's been around for about two years and it's got about half that of youtube and it's growing much faster there's a key to TikTok's ability to hook your attention and just take away hours per day and it's through the use of unpredictable rewards now you've yeah. probably heard about people talking about dopamine recently haven't you like dopamine detox and Andrew Huberman is like a scientist who talks about dopamine a lot dopamine more and more people are talking dopamine. about dopamine and I'm not like some scientist so I'll just give you a very simple explanation essentially dopamine is kind of like motivation it's not so much the enjoyment of something it's more so a pleasurable feeling when you're about to get that thing when you're on pursuit of that thing does that make 
much sense. So you don't actually get that much dopamine when you eat the junk food. You get dopamine when you know you're going to eat the junk food five minutes from now. Dopamine is all about the motivation to go and do the thing. And this is how TikTok absolutely hooks, addicts, manipulates your dopamine receptors because Golly. it's not about you just seeing the best kind of video. It's about the search for the best video. It's about the search for the next video that makes you breathe from your nose. Just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling <laughs> and your dopamine's just hyperactive because you never know the next scroll might be really, really interesting. If you've ever studied psychology, you might know that there's a very famous experiment that found this out like decades ago and this was called the Skinner Rat Box. B.F. Skinner is a very famous psychologist mostly because of this experiment. B.F. Skinner ran an experiment where he put rats inside of a box. Skinner observed that the animals responded most to random rewards. The mice or rats or pigeons would press a lever and sometimes they get a small treat, other times a large treat, and other times nothing at all. Unlike the mice that receive the same treat every single time, the mice that receive variable rewards seem to press the lever compulsively. This is the key to TikTok's addiction strategy. You couple that strategy with the fact that Tinder has an endless scroll. Like you can't get to the bottom. You just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. It's almost like it's psychological warfare. It's funny. He said Tinder there, but they honestly do like the same little shady crap. So <laughs> he was still right at the same time. Fair. Because you see that the creators of TikTok know what they were doing when they created a platform like this. They know that this would addict you severely. And that there's such a level of friction to stop the pursuit of the next dopamine-filled TikTok. To close the app is actually kind of difficult. It's not uncommon yeah. for us to hear of some young guys who are spending more than one to two to three hours per day on TikTok. And there's literally some guys who are more on the extreme side. Five, six, seven, eight hours a day. I can already sense that there might be some people watching this who may have fallen victim to like the Jeffrey propaganda that's come from these companies. And you might literally have like this conscious thought right now thinking oh but like you know it's not that bad like i only do it a little bit i only do it like one hour a day or two hours or you know like everyone else in my school uses it you've got to understand having a thought like that actually shows that you don't have much respect for yourself because as a young man you must know this your time your attention, your ability to do work is worth so much. If you expect to become successful in the future, which I just want you to ask yourself right now, you might have never actually asked yourself this question. So ask yourself totally with honesty, do I expect to become successful in the future? More than just average, more than just making 30,000 pounds. How often you think Hamza washes that house coat? He wears that like every video. And I know he's got money too. So Hamza, if you're watching this, I'm calling you out. Go ahead and get you a new house coat. <laughs> You'll be you'll be you'll be doing Muay Thai anyway, so you could go get, get get you one of those one of those boxing hoodie ones. Those those ones be nice, so you might as well go ahead and get you a new one. <laughs> I'm just playing around in these countries. Do I expect to become very successful, make 70k, 100k, 200k per year? Because if the answer is yes, the way that you will achieve that goal of becoming very successful is by valuing your time and putting your time into the things that will actually get you to that level of success, isn't it? Because success is literally all just have you put in your time into the right things? Have you been learning? Have you been implementing? Have you been trying businesses? Have you been experiencing failure and rejection so that you can grow more? Or have you just been staying in a state of comfort, lying down sideways, just getting more, 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 more dopamine? Now, everything we've discussed in this video is yeah being too comfortable can be so dangerous i have issues with that too sometimes i'll just be in like a very lazy spell that it takes oh bro it takes so much to get out of but once you break out of it you'll feel so much better about yourself bro like get out of bed get off the video games get off tiktok <laughs> and go make some of yourself because <laughs> you can't make anything of yourself just laying in bed all day you can't make anything of yourself just playing games all day unless you're a streamer it's just basic. It's kind of like common sense now. A bunch of people have understood TikTok's, you know, algorithms are really strong and, you know, there's artificial intelligence and there's um, data tracking and, you know, there's the dopamine and stuff. Most people know this, don't we? It gets kind of deeper when you really research TikTok even more. That's when the hairs on your arm start to stand up and you look around thinking that this could literally destroy the world. And I'm not over exaggerating when I say that. You see, TikTok is created by a Chinese company called ByteDance. And ByteDance is actually partnered with the CCP, like the Chinese government. In their agreements, which you can literally read in the terms of service, they are legally obligated to send user data to the CCP, which essentially means that the Chinese government has your data. They know what you're addicted to. And that might not <laughs> seem too bad, right? Oh, yeah, what do they want with data? Look, it's very interesting because we're quite young. And you've probably heard more and more over the last few years about data haven't you and you probably thought like you know why 
do people take that so seriously? Oh, data. Like, you know, we go onto a new website and it says, oh, your data tracking cookies and we just press accept. Like, it doesn't make a difference, right? When you're quite young and almost oblivious to this, you don't really think anything about your data. You don't really think your data is worth much. Up until you realize that that's just because we've lived a very, like, comfortable, sheltered life here in the West or, you know, in some more developed countries like India, Pakistan and everything. Because you see, in some parts of the world, in particularly China, your data is used to totally control you. So here in the West, you know, our data is used to, like, track our shopping so they can sell us more stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, who cares? It's like, oh yeah, we'll be shown more adverts. Okay, fine, who cares? It's not that important, right? But in China, and this is really true, like they already have what's called like a social credit system. Like they've essentially got- like Bro, that is like some Orwellian nightmare type stuff. Y'all remember in the show Black Mirror, they had a whole episode about the social credit system. People's entire lives will be ruined because they didn't have five stars on their person and stuff like that. It, it's bro, that type of stuff. We need to stay as far away from that as a, as a society as possible. If the social credit system ever becomes a thing in the United States, that will be the fall of the U.S. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> people will be so damn like, bro, holy crap. It will get so bad. <laughs> Everywhere would be bad. You got to think like they're miserable over there because of that social credit system. Absolutely miserable. That comes like if that becomes like mainstream in other countries, bro, it's literally going to be like the Matrix. Like <laughs> it's going to be horrible for everybody like a score if you've ever oh you said something wrong minus one star oh i didn't like what you said minus one star oh sorry you only have four stars so uh you can't get this job oh sorry you only have this amount of stars uh yeah you you can't you can't work here oh sorry you can't like bro it, 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 it just gets completely out of hand with that social credit bull crap it's ridiculous Go watch that Black Mirror episode. I think it's called Nosedive, where it's like everyone has like a five star yep. rating out of yep. five stars of like what you'd rate each other for, you know, your social mannerisms and everything. In China, they have that. Like they literally give you like a social credit score. And if your score is too low, they literally restrict your freedom. You can't travel. You can't take buses. You can't take trains. And there's an article I read which showed that when there was like some kind of protest in China, they literally locked it down using people's data like this. Like they stopped people from being able to like leave the protest so they could get arrested. They stopped people. Bro, if that social credit score ever becomes a thing i'm just you're never gonna see me as a part of society again i don't care about getting employed or nothing i'm gonna be out in the woods in a tent <laughs> my social credit score gonna be negative five million <laughs> um yeah i'm not participating in that society keep me out of that i don't want any parts from being able to enter the process by stopping like certain like qr codes or something you know like people's like data from being able to buy trains and everything you don't realize how much your data can control you just because just yet we haven't experienced that in the west and this then coupled with the fact and you might have heard this that in china the tiktok algorithm promotes a very different kind of content than it does in the uk the algorithm in china has been meticulously designed to promote the kind of content that will inspire their young people to become hard and disciplined what does the algorithm in the west promote degeneracy in their version of TikTok, if you're under 14 years old, they show you science experiments you can do at home, museum exhibits, patriotism videos, and educational videos. Now, they don't ship that version of TikTok to the rest of the world. It's almost like they recognize that technology is influencing kids' development, and they make their domestic version a spinach version of TikTok, while they ship the opium version to the rest of the world. How is this linked? What does this all mean? So TikTok in the West promotes degeneracy. And you've known this, right? You've seen these little TikTok girls shaking ass and all this. Like sometimes you Bro, see like real fucking... That is so frustrating, dude. It is just frustrating to see. Because I, I try to... I don't watch any sort of pornography or anything like that at all whatsoever. That stuff will destroy your mind. Stay away from it. And I try to practice no fat. I try, okay? <laughs> but yeah, they'll just try to force that on my For You page sometimes. And I don't watch any of that type of content at all whatsoever. So I'll literally say not interested. And every once in a while, they'll still put it up there. And it's just like, dude, stop it. <laughs> it's probably the reason why I stopped using Instagram. Because they try to force that crap on you too. Porn, like you see some like actual like nudity on TikTok in the West and everything. Little 13-year-old yeah, boys see that. seeing this stuff. This was actually an interesting article. If a 13-year-old boy typed OnlyFans in TikTok, some shit like that, like if he typed it or searched it or whatever, he would be then shown like a bunch of OnlyFans. Like, of course, do you know what I mean? If you search OnlyFans or if you like show an interest in like the OnlyFans and the data picks up, no matter mm -hmm. if it even knows that your account is owned by a 13-year-old, it will start to show you literal OnlyFans models that are trying to tell you to like, you know, subscribe to their fucking OnlyFans list. Do you so understand crazy. the severity of this? 
because yeah. many people won't at this point. This just seems, oh, well, you know, like, yeah, yeah, they're just making people here degenerates, like addicted to sex and, you know, shaking ass or whatever in, in China, making them productive. It doesn't seem that bad, right? This will only really make sense, like the severity of this will only make sense if you know the consequences of a sexualized nation. There's a quote, if you want to destroy any nation without war, make adultery or nudity common in the young generation. And this quote is- For those of you out there who ever read the Bible, Sodom and Gomorrah, literally how this how how the West is going, bro. You wanna you wanna see where the rest is going? Read about Sodom and Gomorrah. That was degenerate. It's about to get to that point. It's becoming more and more realistic. It's become more observable. A country falls when especially the young people become too sexually free. Fuck, this, this video can get really fucking deep. I really hope you can follow along with me. So far, okay, let me just do a recap. So far, we've covered the issues with TikTok. It's extremely addicting. We've covered that TikTok is made by the company ByteDance that reports literally to the CCP, which means that they share data there. And that TikTok's algorithms promote degeneracy, nudity, adultery, open sexual revolution in the West, but then very restrained, disciplined in the East and in China. First of all, we need to answer this question. Why does adultery, why does like sexual freedom destroy a nation? Because that doesn't seem like too obvious right now now does it why when a nation's young people start to have more like free sex outside of marriage why does that destroy the nation it destroys the family dynamic the dynamic family well when people have too much like you know sexually free sex like i'll oh, go fuck whoever you want the family starts to break down yep. when religion was in control the only time you'd really be having sex if you followed those rules was at age 18 you know a man and woman would get married and they'd quickly you know the horniest fucks so you'd quickly get married you'd have sex you start having children boom you've got a family unit you've got the nuclear family unit which was like literally like the most core part of a strong nation because if that nation eventually went to war if that nation was going through some great depression that man would be working hard because he had a family he had a wife and kids to fight for when the family is made redundant and the father is killed from the family unit and replaced with the government and then the young people are promoted to be degenerate and you see this music and everything bro i haven't watched a music video in a while and my friend sammy and him were on a discord call and he just like ended up sharing his screen and he put on like some rap video by um so, you know one of those like black american rappers like you know you always see them wearing chains and shit i hadn't watched any bro, music videos in a now, while I've not seen, like, <laughs> on social media. i don't have any of that shit i've just seen this random one where it's like they're all in like the hood or something and they've got like a bunch of like degen girls twerking around them the guys are like you know imitating sex moves and everything it's very degenerate obviously these aren't their fucking wives or anything do you know what I mean? just that made me think like fuck like that's actually normal in the west bro we gotta be in the hood bro come on now i'm a dog i'm gonna let you slide on that one though <laughs> To see this type of degenerate content you see like these female artists getting like dry humped by their male like dancing stars yeah they they'd be off, wild like, in those videos i'm not people gonna lie. promoting like this degeneracy a lot of people have replied to this and say oh well you know you're a misogynist you don't want people to women sexual freedom and stuff this isn't about hating on a particular sex this is about realizing that this causes weakness because the thing that causes the most strength in a man and therefore the most strength in a country is family and so when we destroy the family yeah. by showing people that they can have sex and promoting them to have sex outside of the family, perhaps this can get even more red pill because then those same people, especially the women, this gets very fucking red pilled, honestly. Like you start to see all the plots like linking together. I'll put this all together soon. But the next thing we need to discuss is what happens when sexual freedoms are opened. What happens when people, young people, are allowed to like to just fuck and it's just normal to be on Tinder and stuff. Men get extremely horny, and so men really want to fuck, and so men start crowding and start wanting to fuck the same girls, and you know, they're sending the messages and everything. That means that women's self-esteem and like you know, self-identity starts to inflate because an average girl is now getting the attention of like a fucking 10, a hundred years ago. That an average girl is getting hundreds of messages just literally like almost like a rock star level attraction that she's getting and she's literally just like a five or something and i will say this like disrespect her i'm just saying like the brutal truth so what happens if sexual freedom is opened up men are now allowed to like hoard women and start texting them all the time and you know of course like when you're allowed to just fuck as a guy it's like you know you may as well go shotgun strategy and message as many girls as possible women's self-esteem yeah. is rising from that so women start seeing themselves better when women see themselves better they only want to fuck guys who are better than them so this five now thinks that she's an eight because of the hundreds of tinder matches that she's getting and now she'll only fuck guys who are eights nines and tens but these guys won't want to get into a serious relationship with her which means that she will like this is, sounds fucking gross and I, I don't mean to be like sexist but she will get ran through by the chads that don't want a real relationship with her because they still see her as a five even though she sees herself as an eight you know this is like the sort of conventional girl that you see who's like oh you know all guys are the same guys keep like guys only want one thing and stuff like guess why she's saying that because she's had these like instant sexual experiences with guys who then don't want to get into a real relationship with her because her you know her sort of image of herself has been inflated by all the little chumps messaging her then yeah. she's had so 
much sex with so many different guys that then that reduces her ability to even pair bond. Self-awareness is probably one of the biggest things that people are lacking nowadays. You really need to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, okay, who am I? What am I? How, like, what, what can I do to improve myself and things of that nature? You really need to be able to analyze yourself, like, honestly. And don't be super, like, uh, biased about yourself. Look at yourself from an outside perspective. Okay, how am I presenting myself to the world? Am I really on the level I think I am? Things like that. If you can become super self-aware, bro, you're, like, untouchable in this world, bro. Like, I'm trying to tell you and stay true with one guy in the future this is where we get controversial and like right now i'll be totally honest i have a fear that i don't even want to record the rest of this video because it might not be worth me literally losing my entire channel for this video i could literally get cancelled for what i'm about to say and i will try and say it in the most like uninsulting way possible but this same woman then who thinks of herself here even though she is here and she's been then sleeping with well she you know she wants these guys and she'll happily get into a relationship with them so you know they end up meeting up going on a date and then they fuck her and then they don't like reply because these guys want a girl up there this girl has now slept with 10 guys 20 guys and there's quite gut-wrenching research that shows that when a woman has slept around her ability to stay faithful drastically decreases in fact it is research this is not like my sexist opinion there is real core research for this that the number one indicator of a woman initiating a divorce and also getting into an affair is her premarital sex history. The number one indicator that she will divorce you or cheat on you is simply just how many guys she has slept with before you. What's interesting is that it is not about the number of times that she has had sex. So a woman could have sex with her boyfriend 10,000 times and that would actually like affect her less than if she had 10 hookups just one time each. So with the promotion of degeneracy, women- well, That is pretty like simple psychological stuff. If you keep jumping from person to person to person to person, it's not going to be hard to jump to another person. Like, that's just... <laughs> that's, like, simple psychological stuff. It's like that for men, too. If you've had, if you dated 30 different women, what the frick is... The, it's not going to be a big deal to get to 31. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is, like, simple psychological stuff. I don't know. I hope that's not controversial. Psychology should never be controversial if it's true. And essentially become corrupted, and that largely destroys their ability to be able to, like, stay faithful with the guy that they eventually want to really get with. And this is the dynamic you see of like a bunch of like, you know, younger girls who have been really pushed to be like so sexually free when they're 16 and 17, 18, having sex since they were like 13 years old. That is Going to parties, yeah. 18, 19, 20, you know, just enjoying themselves. Girls just want to have fun and stuff. Double digit body counts. And you know, guys aren't like free from the responsibilities of this as well. Bro, yeah, you be having like, bro, this is so messed up. These young like, bro, with like way older people and it's like, it just gets, it's just wrong, bro. I'll, I'll discuss guys but i just want to talk about what happens to girls she gets the 22 23 24 she wants to start taking things a bit more seriously she's like with 15 guys 20 guys she's you know had a couple of relationships here and there and eventually when she's 29 years old 30 years old 31 you know she's had like 10 years working and everything and now she really wants to get married she's got pressure from her parents to get to have kids and everything then she meets a chump like you and you're a real man who'll take care of her who doesn't just want her for sex like all those fuck boys did yeah all those assholes that they just used then she meets a real man like you <sighs> A real man. A man who doesn't really care about her sexual history because he's so secure in himself. So she eventually meets the guy who's like the sweetheart that she's always wanted. And, you know, she falls in love. Yeah, he's amazing. And, you know, he's so happy. Yeah, I've met my princess. And, you know, her past, oh, it's okay. And then her ability to actually stay faithful with this guy is just fucking, like, you know, the data shows that it's lowered. But if we think about it in, like, an individual case, what a realistic scenario might be is that, you know, six months they've been together, one year, they've got a child, two years, three years, they've got two children. And, you know, years have went by, bro, years. And she's had children and everything. Now she's focused on the children. She's maybe in work and stuff. And she reminisces of, like, the child from 10 years ago who like you know used to pound the fuck out of her and she ends up like you know just like being a little bit free on a, a voice call with one of her girlfriends and they're just talking and you know they just like subtly keep their voice down like oh yeah do you remember chad like he just came back into the city today and she's like oh my god you know his dick was so big and everything and he, he slept with me so like it was so fucking good i can't believe like that one time him and his friends did you know, and then imagine her husband's like listening in from the door. I know this seems like weird as fuck, like massaging it, but like, bro, this is real, real stuff that happens. Yeah, it's but guys, happens. it's a very interesting case of how TikTok, well, not just TikTok, but you know, just the degeneracy leads to this because guys are then, you know, we've already had this natural impulse inside of us to like fuck a lot, a lot. And so when we're then heavily promoted to do so, and it's kind of open to, you're being sold sex more than you realize. Like you're being castrated. Like all these porn websites, TikTok, social media, you know, like they know that you're so addicted 
related to sex so that they've just like allowed women to you know present themselves in this way because then they're just hooking your attention and they make more money from you and so the majority of guys go through life just totally just addicted and just distracted by like the sexual shit they see on screens by you know movies and music videos and porn and everything and the top 10 percent of like chads you know the top 10 percent of guys they're eligible to have sex and so it's a really weird dynamic where like the literally the majority of guys have a porn addiction they're totally lonely and yet just a small percentage of men have got literally an astronomical body count like have slept with so many oh, women that yeah. you wouldn't even believe you know there's men out there who have quite literally slept with thousands of women and there's a fair amount of guys who have slept <laughs> with hundreds of women and yet there's millions billions of guys who have never even kissed the girl before so all of these problems you know stem from degeneracy degeneracy is promoted by tiktok and all these problems lead to a weak country it leads to a country that doesn't have a strong family unit it leads to a country that has men who don't have children who don't have wives to work hard for and so those men just kind of you know sleep away into the darkness and just go to work grudgingly come back and just like jack off and 10 years from now it'll be the exact same routine but they'll come back and exchange 0.1 ethereum for a cuddle in virtual reality fucking metaverse TikTok isn't entirely to blame for this because degeneracy has started in these western countries for a while but how TikTok comes into this equation is very, very interesting. There is a term called subversion. Subversion is a term for destroying your enemy's culture from the inside. It's like a war tactic. There is literally a war tactic that discusses how to destroy a nation without actually going to war. And it's by degrading their culture and the strength of their men. And there is a war strategist, a very famous Chinese war strategist from like ages ago, hundreds or maybe thousands of years ago, called Sun Tao. And there's a book called The Art it's of Sun War. Tao, and in this digital. Chinese book of like war strategy, it says that one of the greatest war strategies out there is to destroy the enemy country without even fighting a war that they realize that they're fighting. Essentially to like have an invisible war that the enemy country doesn't even realize that they're at war. That strategy has been used to create TikTok. It is literally destroying like the culture, the values of other countries, promoting degeneracy at like a compounding scale, weakening the men there. I heard this, I don't know if this is true, but school kids in China are being given the art of war to study in school. Like that's like, like compulsory reading. In the UK, we have fucking Biff and Chip. Like we have like these books that we've been reading since like, you know. Another very powerful war tactic that can be used that many people don't know about, but I feel like everyone watching this should know about is what's known as controlled opposition. So pretty much you put in place a leader for uh like another like uh military or something like that. You put in place your leader. It's almost like a spy or something like that, but it's like they they lead those people. So you can have them lead their army into a trap with your controlled opposition leader and just destroy them. Um yeah, that's 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 a very powerful strategy as well. Oh, like, oh, Biff kicked over the ball into his neighbor's backyard and he's gonna go get it. We've been reading this shit. China's been preparing for war, openly, like, openly stating that they are going to war. And everyone here is too busy just twerking. The degeneracy of the West is unfounded. You know, you've heard Tate talk about London being like a failed state. And I think a lot of people agree with that. Like, you know, London is like very dangerous and everything. I'm in London right now, by the way. I'm not from here. Like I'm from like up north in, in Warrington, Manchester. But like, this is my first time really coming here. I was about to move here, get an apartment here. And when I heard this stuff like, oh, you know, London's a failed state, it's really st dangerous. There's a bunch of like stabbings and stuff here. I was like, oh, you know, it's probably overblown. It's probably in like the broke areas. London's like really big. So it's like, it's in some like broke ass little town close to London or something. I've been here. I'm not gonna lie. I'd be damn they're invincible in london like guns like i don't bro there's not much you can do against a gun but a knife bro i'm fast as shit and i can box off the back foot so i'm gonna be weaving all that if i'm in london you feel me i'll be invincible in london i want a quick a pretty good 40 yard dash and 100 meters so i they aren't touching me in london if i ever go there on granny for a month <laughs> quite dangerous like instances that we've experienced and like me and my girl like, we're not like that social like obviously we're like you know nice people and stuff but like we've not been out partying we've not been out every single day i literally just wake up and just work all day and we go to the gym that's like the only time that we're outside of the house literally just yesterday we just witnessed that guy getting robbed like we were here we're in the bedroom right now of this apartment we're staying in we hear like screaming outside we look out this window this window right fucking here we look out and quite literally bro 50 meters away there's a delivery driver getting robbed by two guys they're literally punching him they're looking through like the box 
they're like the mopeds like the scooter guys will come and deliver your food and stuff they've got like a little box where the food is kept they're like going through that whilst like beating the shit out of the delivery driver i've called the police and yeah. everything and i'm just watching it thinking like bro those guys are literally robbing this guy for like 20 pounds worth of fucking food it shook me up i called sam and everything we just kind of like laugh yeah london's failed and everything and maybe this wasn't a good idea but after doing that bro i went on to like google and everything and just started i was like you know what i actually need to be a little bit more anxious because this shit's real and i've been like too sheltered but i actually did what tate recommended i went on to google i don't recommend it i don't think you should do this but like if you're interested and you're morbidly interested and maybe if you're over 18 i went on to google and i just searched london stabbing and i actually read like in detail some of the articles and then I'm not going to tell you where just in cases, but like I searched for the specific area that I'm in and searched stabbing and started to like, you know, see the articles of people being stabbed near here and where it would say which street they were stabbed in. You know, a news article will say like, oh, he was killed in this street. I'd copy and paste that street into Google Maps, bro. And it fucking shook me up because they were literally literally less than five minutes walk from here how is this related to what we're talking about well when degeneracy causes a nation to start like you know declining and the men become more weak and the men don't have much to work hard for then the country starts like performing worse the hard financial time starts hitting then people are really fucking broke and then you know there's no fucking father do you think the people who are stabbing around here you think those guys have got like good quality father figures in the home of course not degeneracy is leading to the father being killed off away from the home and you know the single mother is going to raise the child and so these guys were out here stabbing these guys were out here fucking robbing people and attacking people for 20 pounds worth of food i can guarantee they're not gonna go home to like some positive loving father uh, of course they're not right the two guys out here just robbing this guy for 20 pounds worth of food they're not going home to some like loving family are they they're not going home to some loving parents masculine father feminine mother are they the father's being killed away from the home and when the father gets killed the boy isn't going to be raised to be successful the thing is the west does not want to listen to these statistics i think this video might get me fucking fully like this video might get age restricted or something fine this video might get demonetized fine i fear that this video would literally like cause me to get silenced and i really like I, I don't even know if we're going to release this video honestly like i've already had it in my account send it to my editor i'll get him to do the first draft and me and my team will come together and literally just see like is it worth the risk the west doesn't want to talk about this there are severe consequences to a child being raised without a father. And that specifically means, like I have to say this, that specifically means that there are problems to a child being raised by a single mother and that stems from the degeneracy that's happening. It stems from this you go girl attitude. Like, you know, this woman who's, you know, slept around more and then she's got a higher body count and then now she's got less of a chance to pair bond with her husband and then she eventually goes and cheats or she files a divorce and she can raise the kids all by herself because this woman who is a victim in her own right has been conditioned and brainwashed since five years old to say like, yep, you can do everything that a man can. You don't need a man, you're, you're, you go Go girl yes you go girl you can have a career children and raise the children by yourself you don't need a man the government will pay for you men are being ex like escorted out of their families and this is what the result is what you hear about in london these london standings of like these fucking fucked up young men who are going around with knives with machetes with fucking swords and literally killing innocent people that's happening because of only two things it's happening because the father has been taken away from the home and the father's been taken away because of degeneracy because of tiktok and also it's happening because of poor mental health which again has been caused by tiktok and tiktok again is it's also because of no spiritual foundation when, when your society completely loses any religious foundation Bro, the only thing that's stopping people from being immoral is the laws, and that's just not enough. Like, part of the reason why religion is so important, well, not, I shouldn't just say religion, but any, some sort of spiritual foundation, is because, like, bro, people just, human nature is just, like, I don't want to say it's evil, but it's very, like, self, self-promoting. Like, you'll do, you'll do stuff that's strictly, like, to help yourself, and just, you don't give a crap about what happens to anyone else. You'll screw them over, stab them in the, back, in the back, whatever. But if people understood that, yes, you will be punished in the afterlife for the things that you do in this realm. And you may have to come back here and do it over again in a crappier position than you were before because of how you acted in this life. Or in the next life, you will you could be in like, you know, you could be getting punished or something like that, right? People will want, they won't want to screw over people and treat them like crap and do all this other terrible stuff to them as much. So, like, as we get farther and farther away from, like, religion and spirituality and stuff like that, we're going to see the society just go absolutely to shit. People are just going to be treating each other like crap. People are going to be killing each other. People are going to be robbing each other. It's just going to it's gonna get really freaking bad. It, because the law, laws and, like, rules and law enforcement can only do so much to stop people from being evil. <laughs> There's only so much that they can do. It, it, it's just a straight-up fact. If you want to look back in history... People just tend to be crappy, <laughs> especially if there's no spiritual or moral foundation.
This is just facts. If there, if we, if there ever gets to a point in history where religion and spirituality is completely gone, it will literally be like Babylon and like uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. It'll be like the days of Noah. It's going to be very bad, and we're starting to get to that time period, and people are starting to see what's going on, but people aren't going to realize it until it's too late. Do you know what I mean? Like, bro, this is real stuff. Even if you look at Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate used to be an atheist. Andrew Tate was an atheist, then he was a Christian, now he's a Muslim, he kind of like jumps around, but he even realizes like, holy crap, like bro, this is like, <laughs> life with no spiritual foundation truly is just like dark, <laughs> like bro, it's 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 just so deep, bro, it really gets so deep. It's not just the entire problem in porn websites or the social medias. I told you that this would get a lot deeper than just Oh, it's, you know, it's a social media website and that's not good for us. Maybe you're watching this right now and you think I'm absolutely crazy. Or maybe you're watching this with so much fucking interest because it's clicking in your brain. You're thinking like, fuck, now the pieces have been put together. I don't know as like a macro level solution to this. I, I really don't know. But I know for certain what will work for you is your own self-improvements. It's your own journey of delaying gratification, of improving your mental health, of going to the gym and becoming a strong man because you will be needed soon. Now is this the best time of your entire life to become a strong man and to start making money and just in cases you need to like leave your country if you're in the West, if you're in UK or US. Just in cases you need to fly out and like take your family to like some other country or something like bro, I don't know what, what's gonna happen but when I researched TikTok as I did for this video, I'm scared. I'm literally not saying this to like, you know, invoke your emotion and hopefully get more engagement in this video, bro. This is something that's like literally kept me paranoid for like the last two weeks. And I also, I know for a fact some people are going to reply to this video like, oh yeah, he's just paranoid. Oh, he's so anxious and stuff, bro. Like, if you're not paranoid, I think that's weird. I don't think I'm the weird one for being paranoid when we've been presented with this data. I think the people who aren't paranoid who are just still with the same mindset. Like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it'll, it'll be okay. Like, just because we've never experienced like a first-hand war in our lives, you know, if you've lived in the UK or something, it doesn't mean that it, one can't happen. There's countries right now who have literally like been invaded. They weren't expecting a war like, like one year ago. Everything just seemed kind of normal. Things can change. And if it helps my argument at all every rich guy that i have in my contact list is preparing for war like they're preparing stacking up more money we're all literally speaking about like okay what's the plan of action right now every rich guy bro every single guy that i know who's in my contact list who's worth more than one million every single one of them is slightly paranoid every single one and in fact you can even go see like their social media pages their youtube channels and everything and they've literally been like subtly mentioning shit like this for like the last two years and i only just picked up now what's so interesting is that all of like the broker guys all like you know the broke random guys out there who you know just so ignorant to all this stuff they're the kind of guys who are saying like, oh bro, just chill bro what, what were you oh come on come to the pub come come play some video games bro distracting themselves that's a lot to take in, so I don't know what else to say to you, bro. Watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah. Yeah, he kind of like took the words out of my mouth with <laughs> with that one, man. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much to say now. Kind of, he hit the nail on the head with that video. That was a great video. Hopefully, they don't try to take it down, or hopefully, they don't try to take any of these videos down or be weird or any crap, because this this type of information needs to get out. There's just not a lot of people talking about this type of stuff. Um, yeah, man. Self-improvement is important. Spirituality, a religious foundation is important. You get those two things, you're, you're going to be good, bro. You're going to be fine. Um, anyway, I hope you all like this video. Shout out to Hamza. You make great content. You truly are doing a service to pretty much everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm out.